One cool thing about the U-Bolt Pro is that it has a small footprint and it has a slim profile. <laughs> but watch this. You can actually open this up and it will show the key slot. And hmm, what's this? Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today we are going to check out one of Ultralock Smart Lock, the U-Bolt Pro Z-Wave model. But this is not going to be a full review of this lock and I need to give you some background. I agreed to check this lock out because they said that it integrates with Ring Alarm's base station and this is the Z-Wave model of their Ultra Bolt Pro. They do have different models with different price points and this is the one that they are going to send me. And I told them that I'm interested and I'll be setting this up to integrate with my Ring Alarm Pro's base station. And thank you Ultralock for sending me this smart lock to be reviewed. And I did give them a heads up if they want me to proceed with this review because first, Ring is not mentioned in any of their advertising and this smart lock is not included in the smart lock list in the Ring app. But they told me to proceed and I'm going to state again that this is coming from me or a customer with the sole purpose of integrating this with Ring. Before we dive in, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you. First, I'll give you a quick rundown of the features. This has a fingerprint sensor, anti-peep code, auto unlock, control via the app using Bluetooth, using a Z-Wave hub or controller like in my case the Ring Alarm base station. I can control the lock from anywhere or also share access remotely. It has a door sensor so you know if it is open or closed. Auto lock works with Alex A, Google Assistant, smart things and if this then that. Inside the box, we have some paperwork, installation guide, adding to a Z-Wave hub guide, a drill template if it is a new door, and we have the lock itself which is a smaller footprint than other locks I have reviewed. We have the outdoor unit. The silver part here is metal but this black front plate is plastic. On the bottom here, there is a rubber flap that covers the micro USB port for backup power in case the batteries run out. And also there is a little tab here where you can push down and pull out and opens the lock to show the key slot. That's a pretty clever design. And the black part is plastic but it's like a faceplate and the whole thing is mostly metal. Then we have the indoor unit itself, combination of plastic and metal. Also thinner and has a smaller footprint. On the back we have the connection slots here. Pull this plastic piece up to show the battery compartment. And we'll need 4 AA batteries to power this up. What else do we have? We have a metal mounting plate for the inside unit. We have a set of keys and mounting screws. We have machine screws. It comes with a combo driver, Phillips, and hex key. Then we have the door sensor and we have the deadbolt itself. And lastly, we have four AA batteries. Time to install this. Making sure the deadbolt is right side up, screw it into the door using the included screws. Slide in the outdoor unit making sure the wire harness goes underneath the deadbolt and the tailpiece through the deadbolt in the horizontal slot. On the inside, push the wiring through the slot on the metal bracket. And same thing on the tailpiece. Then screw the metal bracket into the outdoor unit using the included long machine screws. Before tightening the screws, make sure everything is level. Plug in the wire harness to the back of the indoor unit and making sure the thumb turn is vertical, insert it to the tailpiece and push it in onto the metal bracket. Then screw it in using the two short machine screws. Test the thumb turn making sure it doesn't bind. Time to set this up, which you do need to set this up using their U-Tech app. Click on u -Bot Pro Series and insert the batteries. Type in your main code. Set the deadbolt position and add the door sensor, which you need to stick or screw in the inside door jam on the lower edge of the lock so that it will know if the door is open or closed. It has a cover also if you want to put it in. Follow the rest of the instructions to calibrate the lock until it is successfully set up. At this point in time, this lock is a Bluetooth lock. So if you are within Bluetooth range, you can see the status of the door and the lock in the UTEC app. Click on it and you can lock and unlock the door. And if you add your fingerprint and access code in the UTEC app while you're in the Bluetooth range, you can unlock the lock using fingerprint. You can push the ultra lock button to lock. You can use the keypad using your access code and you can open up the lock using the backup key slot which I have some concerns which I'll tell you later on so keep on watching. And now we can connect a Z-Wave hub which we will use the Ring Alarms hub. Now I'll open up the Ring app, scroll down to set up a device, click locks and access control, click on Z-Wave locks and as you can see the ultra lock is not included on the rings list. Click add manually. 
Z-Wave, and we will scan the QR code of the lock, which with this U-Bolt Pro is going to be on the inside of the battery cover. Click Use This Code. Go to your Rings Devices list, and you will see the lock. Click on it and click Finish Setup. Select or name a room and name your lock, and it is successfully connected. When you go to your Rings dashboard, click on the locks. Your new lock will show up, and it says it is unlocked. Tap on it to lock. Cool, it works. Click on it to unlock. In the main lock interface, you have the battery level, lock and unlock switch, and alerts. You have event history and device settings, and that's it. And this is where my excitement for this lock ended. Three years ago, I made a video of a Z-Wave lock from Yale and one that is included on the rings list in the setup. And I will link it down below if you want to check it out. And remember, that was three years ago. And I still have this lock, not installed but in a plastic bin in my office. But the batteries are still in, and it still works. I can still control it, and I know Ring did an update in its integration with Alarm that you can set this so that the lock using the keypad and your access code, you'll be able to arm or disarm the alarm. Unfortunately, Ultralock's U-Bolt Pro is not able to do this. And not only that, you're not able to add or delete users using the Ring app, which my 3-year-old Yale lock can do. And as to notifications, it will only notify you if the lock was controlled in the Ring app, meaning you will not get any notifications if you use your fingerprint, the keypad, or you manually lock or unlock the lock. Now, I'm not blaming the lock itself or Ring. This lock is not ready to be advertised to work at its full potential with the Ring alarm. Ultralock stated that they will be updating the notifications and working with Ring to add it to their list. I wish they waited for that before contacting me and making this review. But I guess they agreed for me to continue. I'm not sure how this Z-Wave model works with other Z-Wave hubs, but for a Ring user and wanting to integrate this lock, its functions are limited, and I'm not even recommending it at this time. Now, adding the Ultralock Wi-Fi bridge will make this have Wi-Fi features like notifications from the app and able to remotely add or delete users. And you don't even need to integrate this with Ring. And as I said earlier, this review is for ring integration, which this lock at this time is able to do, but will have limited features. Lastly, one more thing that I noticed is that when you open up the lock to show the key slot, which is a pretty cool feature. And by the way, I like how this lock is low profile and has a small footprint. But first time I opened it up, I noticed the wires from the keypad and print sensor going to the inside unit is somewhat exposed. And I did tell them about this, but they assured me that they have tested it and it is not a safety concern. What is your take on it? Comment down below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.